guys. Hey guys. We're back with another sci-fi review, this time reviewing the sci-fi original series Aftermath, Season 1, Episode 9, titled The Barbarous King. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. Okay, the title of this episode was The Barbarous King. This is clearly in reference to Karen's father, but also it comes directly, just like every other title from Aftermath, from T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. And I want to read something from Wikipedia regarding The Barbarous King and the legend it refers to. So first, a passage from T.S. Eliot's epic poem, The Wasteland. The change of Philomel by the barbarous king so rudely forced, yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues, jug, jug, to dirty ears. Now from Wikipedia. Eliot employs the myth to depict themes of sorrow, pain, and that the only recovery or regeneration possible is through revenge. So at the end of the episode, Karen and the rest of the Copeland family have left Karen's father because Josh Copeland witnessed some very nefarious things going on at the Paradise. So, could this title be a possible reference to something in a future episode where Karen's father goes to seek revenge against Josh? Just throwing that out there. Okay, all throughout this episode, we get a ton of hints that the Copelands are somehow important. Yeah. And through Josh Copeland's hallucination, where he sees his father near the end of the episode, we find out that they are adepts. Yes, now, like we do every time something new is introduced in the show, we immediately Googled it and unfortunately couldn't find anything because all we were uh, coming up was how to adapt mythology to modern day or how yeah. to adapt mythology to animation and all sorts of stuff but nothing about an adept. adept. So we're asking for your help. In yes. mythology, what exactly is an adept? Is it exactly what it sounds like? Something that can adapt to the environment or the yeah. situation? Or this could just be something that the show is using. Um, obviously the family is special. They're able to survive in this world where the odds are highly against them. And their entire family is surviving. Their core family. Now up until this episode, we were under the impression that it was the females in the family that were um, special. Because, you know, Brianna with the um, Q-Bird and um, Dana, with her, Dana dreams, with her dreams. And, and Karen in the cave with yeah, her hallucination, her prophetic hallucination. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, in this episode, Josh has the hallucination. Yeah, it's peyote-fueled, but it directly involves their current situation. Yeah. So I think it was more than just the peyote. I think it was a supernatural experience. So now the only person in the family who hasn't had this supernatural experience is Matt. Yeah. So we look for him to have one before the end of the season. Yeah, definitely. He can't be the only one left out. <laughs> So, Karen's dad. Karen's dad, well, it seems like Karen's whole side of the family are just a bunch of nuts. Yeah. And her dad is definitely a nut. Yeah, and I'm under the impression that she knows or is related to, like, everybody. Because, like, every time they come across <laughs> something bad, she's like, oh, damn it, it's so-and-so. <laughs> you know what, though? My brother-in-law is like that. Yeah. So it's totally... <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally plausible. Like, I've known people like that. Like, no matter where they go, it's like they know everybody. So yeah. it's totally and, plausible. And, and your dad is like that, too. Yeah, he, yeah, he my dad's like that. He just knows everybody, so... Yeah. So, it's just hilarious, though, because it's like every time they meet somebody and it looks like it's going to be a bad situation, it's somebody she knows or is related to. <laughs> now, we've enjoyed every single episode of Aftermath, but I think this is hands down the best episode so far. Yeah, yeah. And there were a couple of scenes that I especially liked. I liked the girls' night out scene where Brie is pouring drinks for Dana, but yeah. she's not putting any liquor in them. And I, I do really think that that was a nice thing. She knew her sister yeah. needed an outlet, but she didn't want her sister to actually harm herself. Yeah. So she allowed her to fake it. And, you know, she didn't know shit was going to go down and she wasn't going to, you know, that it was going to come out that that's what she did. Yeah. 
But it, it was actually a really smart thing to do because she knows that she needs this release, yeah. but she doesn't want her to be impaired during yeah, the apocalypse. Exactly. So it's actually a really smart thing yeah. to do as, as well as just gener generally consider it. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, it was super uncool to take the truck. Yeah. <laughs> come on, oh Bree. <laughs> I mean, like Matt said, she was probably just going to come back yeah. eventually, like after she cooled down, she was probably going to come back, but still, that, that was not cool. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, they have radios, but basically she stranded him there. <laughs> yeah. The other scene I really liked in this episode was the Brie versus the shapeshifter fight. Yeah. The choreography in that fight was amazing. It looked like a legit MMA fight. Yeah, that was really, really good. And I loved that Dana not only knew which one, because of course if anybody's going to know, it's going to be Dana, but I love that there was an actual explanation for it. Like, yeah. she had a legit reason for knowing. Our cat's playing. She's so bad. <laughs> and the very last thing in this episode, it looks like Josh has the fever head disease. Yeah. Oh my god. Can like, we... we didn't think so at first because he's coughing up blood. Yeah. That's not typically, I mean, yeah, they have bleeding in the mouth, but that's not usually a sign. It's usually they start going crazy. Yeah. But then we saw the previews for next week, and yeah, yeah it looks like he's going to start going crazy, yeah. and he's definitely got the fever head. I was kind of hoping being an adapt would, like, make them immune Yeah, or that's kind of what I, I thought, like, the... It seems like just the, the word adapt would seem that they would be... You know, Immune to the apocalypse disease. <laughs> yeah, so... Damn, they, they should have taken the Tetra from Karen's dad. Yeah. Although... The, it it could have like been they, the bad Tetra, though. Yeah, you, you, you almost kind of... Do, do you take it or not? Well, of course, they didn't know when they left that Josh was going to come down yeah. with the disease. But, man, they might be kicking themselves here. But, again, it could have been the bad Tetra. You just yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. I love that little touch. Like, he's like, oh, they should have taken it, but what if they did? Yeah, it was the bad stuff. Yeah, that was the stuff that they cut. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's like, a really <laughs> nice touch. I think that's pretty much everything we have for this video. What an awesome episode. Oh, my gosh. If you have anything to add, let us know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this review, and we really hope you did, be sure to tell us by dropping a like on it and subscribe for more reviews. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.